It could be argued that the history of aviation spans thousands of years, but in the last generation alone, mankind has developed technology that has allowed humanity to not only take flight, but to accomplish powerful feats of aerodynamic speed, distance, and heights. Many fighters which could prove combat effectiveness didn't enter into production. So here is a mouth-watering selection of 10 fighters which didn't make it to the squadron service. So firstly, we have the Northrop YF-17, which is a prototype lightweight fighter aircraft designed by Northrop Aviation for the United States Air Force's Lightweight Fighter Technology Evaluation Program. The LFW was initiated because many in the fighter community believed that the aircraft like the F-15 Eagle were too large and expensive for many combat roles. The YF-17 was selected for the new Naval Fighter Attack Experimental Program, and the aircraft was powered by two 14,400-pound force General Electric YJ 101 GE 100 after burning turbojets. It had partial fly by wire called an electronic control augmentation system, which used ailerons, rudders, and stabilators for primary flight control. Up next is the Sukhoi Su-37 or the Flanker F, which was a single-seat twin-engine aircraft designed by the Sukhoi Design Bureau that served as a technology demonstrator. It allowed for the need of enhanced pilot control of the Su-27M, which was a further development of the Su-27. It was modified with updated flight and weapons control systems and the aircraft made its maiden flight in April 1996. Throughout the flight test program, the Su-37 demonstrated its supermaneuverability at air shows performing maneuvers such as 360-degree somersault. It did not enter production despite a report in 1998 which claimed that Sukhoi had built a second Su-37 using the 12th Su-27M airframe. Up next is the Afro-Canada CF-105 Arrow. This was a delta-wing interceptor aircraft designed and built by Afro-Canada. The CF-105 held the promise for Mach 2 speeds at altitudes exceeding 15,000 meters and was intended to serve as the Royal Canadian Air Force's primary interceptor into the 1960s and beyond. After considerable study, the RCAF selected a dramatically more powerful design and serious development began in March 1955. A wide variety of weapons could be deployed from this bay. The cancellation was the topic of considerable political controversy at the time, and the subsequent destruction of the aircraft in production remains a topic for debate among historians and industry pundits. Next, we have the Dassault Mirage 4000. Sometimes named the Super Mirage 4000, it was a French prototype twinjet fighter aircraft developed by Dassault from their Mirage 2000. The Mirage 4000 was noticeably larger and heavier than the single-engine Mirage 2000 and the 4000 having two Snegma M53-2 turbofans. It also featured small canards having the engine air intakes and the true bubble canopy compared to the Mirage 2000 and previous Mirages. The Mirage 4000 first flew on 9th March 1979, and it was comparable in size to the United States F-15 Eagle and was designed to be both a long-range interceptor and a capable fighter-bomber. In the early 1980s, the Salt ended the program shortly after the Saudis chose the Tornado as their preferred aircraft. Up next is the Northrop F-20 Tiger Shark. This was a light fighter designed and built by Northrop and its development began in 1975 as a further evolution of Northrop's F-5E Tiger II featuring a new engine that greatly improved overall performance and a modern avionics suite including a powerful and flexible radar. The F-20 was much faster, gained beyond visual range air-to-air -air capability and had a full suite of air-to-ground modes capable of firing most US weapons. With these improved capabilities, the F-20 became competitive with contemporary fighter designs such as the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, but was much less expensive to purchase and operate. Northrop had high hopes for the F-20 in the international market, but policy changes following Ronald Reagan's election meant that the F-20 had to compete for sales against aircraft like the F-16, the USAF's latest fighter design. The development program was abandoned in 1986. Next is the Northrop McDonnell Douglas YF-23. This is an American single-seat twin-engine stealth fighter aircraft technology demonstrator designed for the United States Air Force. The YF-23 was designed to meet USAF's requirements for survivability, supercruise, stealth, and ease of maintenance. 
In the 1980s, the USAF began looking for a replacement for its fighter aircraft, especially to counter the USSR's advanced Sukhoi Su-27 and Mikoyan MiG-29. Several companies submitted design proposals. The USAF selected proposals from Northrop and Lockheed. Northrop teamed with McDonnell Douglas to develop the YF-23, while Lockheed, Boeing and General Dynamics developed the YF-22. The YF-23 was stealthier and faster, but less agile than its competitor. After a four-year development and evaluation process, the YF-22 was announced the winner in 1991 and entered production as the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. Next is the IAI Lavi. This was a single-engine, fourth-generation multi-role jet fighter developed in Israel by Israel Aircraft Industries during the 1980s. The Lavi performed successfully in flight tests with its flight handling described as excellent by test pilots. The uniqueness of its design was in the combination of a small, aerodynamic, highly maneuverable plane with sophisticated software-rich systems, a low-armed drag, and the ability to carry a large payload at high speed and over long distances. If the project had not been cancelled, the IAF would be operating the world's most advanced fighter upgraded over the years to incorporate operational experience and newer technology. Mikoyan Project 1.44, or the Flatpak, was an aircraft developed by the Mikoyan Design Bureau. It was the Soviet Union's answer to the U.S.'s advanced tactical fighter incorporating many fifth-generation jet fighter aspects such as advanced avionics, stealth technology, super maneuverability, and super cruise. The MiG featured a close coupled cannon layout which, when working with the vectorable engines, gave the aircraft remarkable maneuverability. The design's development was a protracted one characterized by repeated and lengthy postponements. Due to a chronic lack of funds, the MiG 1.44 made its maiden flight in February 2000, nine years behind schedule, and was cancelled later that year. Up next is the Sukhoi Su-47 Berkut, also known as the Firkin, which was an experimental supersonic jet fighter. A distinguishing feature of the aircraft was its forward-swept wing that gave the aircraft excellent agility and maneuverability. While serial production of the type never materialized, the sole aircraft produced served as a technology demonstrator prototype for a number of advanced technologies later used in the 4.5-generation fighter Su-35 and current 5th-generation jet fighter Su-57. The Su-47 has extremely high agility at subsonic speeds, enabling the aircraft to alter its angle of attack and its flight path very quickly while retaining maneuverability in supersonic flight. The Su-47 has a maximum speed of Mach 1.6 at high altitudes and a 9G capability. Next is the Lockheed YF-12. This is an American prototype interceptor aircraft developed and manufactured by American aerospace company Lockheed Corporation. It was developed during the late 1950s and early 1960s as a potential replacement for the F-106 Delta Dart interceptor for the United States Air Force. During the 1960s, the YF-12 underwent flight evaluations by the USAF, but funding to put it into operational use was not forthcoming partly due to the pressing demands of the Vietnam War and other military priorities. It set and held speed and altitude world records of over 2,000 miles per hour and over 80,000 feet, which was later surpassed by its Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird derivative and is the world's largest, heaviest and fastest man-made interceptor to date. So that's it guys for today, we hope you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button for more videos like this. Don't forget to check out our other videos, we'll see you next time.